speak of him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the sevenfold spirit before his Christ, and from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. Your brother is the sister of Christ. There's times where I go weak without thinking much about heaven. You know, it's not that I don't cherish the thought, it's just that I get busy with life here when things seem to be going well enough. I know heaven is wonderful. But I do that we pretty good too. The past week wasn't one of those weeks. I can only imagine the things we felt when we were in the United States. I see one of my friends. And it's really shattering. A reminder our world is broken. Maybe you felt grief for those who lost loved ones. And maybe you wanted to cry out in fear because you shouldn't have to be terrified about taking your kids to school. Maybe you felt angry. of hearing about another person who decided to choose such evil What other will try to do to do Whether it's grief or it's fear or anger or just trust. That's your trust. One word is the answer It's the constant cry of the Christian heart. Tell me. Things weren't always this way. Our sermon text is taken from the very last chapter of the Bible. But to understand it, we need to go back to the very first, to the very beginning, where in a garden halfway around the world, there stood a tree. And this tree was one of our many kinds of trees that grew in the garden, all of them pleasing to the eye and good for fruit. But this tree, stood in the very center of the garden. And it had a name. The tree of life. While other trees produced fruit for their sweet taste or for temporary nutrition, this tree produced nothing other than fruit for eternal life. It produced life. But we chose we chose to eat from the one tree we knew it was going to be set. And we were there. We were blocked, our right to the tree of life cut off. And we all admit, it came to the first cry of the Christian heart. And the cry that will be passed down for thousands of years after this. Come. Come, O oh, promised seed of the woman, to come and crush the head of the serpent. Come, oh, seed of Abraham, seed of David, from that seed restore to us the tree of life. Come, Messiah, give us life. But the damage is done. The tree was lost, the garden was gone, and you know exactly what life outside of paradise looks like. Outside are the dogs. Sexually and morals of murderers, the idolatry. And it isn't just a young man who murders children in the Saudi Texas. It isn't just a serial rapist who finally gets caught. It's all those who so much think a hateful thought of their life. It's all those who simply look with lust in their eyes before they can catch them. It's all those who think less of God and right to himself just in it. You and you, this broke us to the very beginning. No life, no hope, no one who could have come for us. And year after year passed, and no one came. So then, gave us the cross. Two thousand years ago, 
to the priest. And this priest was one of the only three trees on top of that hill, called ugly and dead, and nothing bright and rough in the garden. This priest stood in the very center of the tree, and this had a big tree of life. While the other two trees produced only death, this tree produced nothing other than life from death and eternal life for all. For just as the devil overcame us by a tree, so in turn by a tree would he be overcome. All are united with Jesus Christ. We were redeemed, we were restored, our right to the tree of life restored. Cry of the Christian heart is answered. So we read the first two thirds of the book. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come to the world. Our salvation's work is done. The constant cry of the Christian heart remains. Come, O risen and ascended Lord. Come, O rider of the white horse, the faithful and true. Come, O King of kings and Lord of lords. Come, Lord Jesus. Bring us home. But there is one thing that we try to stop us dead in our death. So once the charge people will bring against us to make us stop crying about this word. Your two heavenly minded, you have any earthly good. So, so what can we say to that? How can we defend this constant cry of our heart? Thankfully, there are three who will come to our defense. The first is the Apostle Paul. He can tell us the sad story of what happened in Corinth when the church there no longer said, Come. What evil people practice with, with their bodies when they forgot they were to be resurrected by them. Paul's conclusion? If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all. The second witness. Is the Holy Spirit, who is himself crying out with the church, Come, Lord Jesus. But this cry is not the breath of the word. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. As we cry out to Jesus, those who hear this and I cried, it wasn't for them. The other ones become theirs as well. As we cry out to Jesus, they too will come and cry out to stay to them. So every hope belongs to him. The Lutheran preacher Martin Strauss said this in the church. She is not hunkered down to the hope. She is hunkered. He who is ready to share the water of life will give more of the same water. We who are ready to share the gospel water of life will be ready to give the water of his soul too. And that's why we as a church family send aid and prayers and everywhere from Ukraine to the Gulf. That's what you pray for the good news. You give us your time. And your resources and your faith to the hurting of your life. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. And the third and final defense of the church is from the Lord of the church itself. Jesus Christ. The Christ the church will face that charge of being. Who had any mind to be of any earth and good? But the truth is, if we are heavenly minded, we will be of no earthly good. Jesus makes that clear in our gospel reading. 
way that he prays. Father, I want those who have given me to be with me. Isn't working towards eternity. I would settle for nothing. I want it all. I want every last moment to be working towards this. That those who have given me will be with me. Where are they? I want that too. I want those who can be every I want every last moment. Every last joy and every last hardship to be working towards something. I want no more distress. No more physical pain. No more emotional and mental distress in this broken world. I want no more division between you and me because of how imperfect we both are and how imperfectly we can relate. I want it all. I can settle for nothing less. I want them all. Jesus' the words become our own. I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. I've got a lot of reflection recently. I realized I don't want just 12 months with you. I want an eternity with you. I will settle for nothing less. I hold God to his promises. He has promised to give us eternal life, to give you eternal life. We would like to give it. And it won't just be us to look. It will be my grandfather. It will be my aunt. It will be my brother. It will be your parents, your spouse, your son, your daughter. And it won't just be them to look. It will be God. The one without whom none of this is possible. Or the one who did everything he could, even gave up his own life to make it possible. Who loves you that much and has always loved you that much, even though you cannot see him. And though you cannot see him, you love him and long for him and cry out, Come. Do you think you want that too? Doesn't that just sound like heaven? And that's exactly what heaven gives you to the past. Heaven gives you meaning in every moment. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Heaven gives you the constant assurance of Christ's presence to color every hardship that ever will I need. Heaven gives you the perfect assurance that no division and no goodbye can destroy the unity that exists between God's people. But no one can snatch them out of your hands. Not one of them has ever been lost. Not even through all the suffering they can be. Very moment that we speak, the stand of faith. And it's a familiar truth to you. The street stands in the middle of glimmering golden streets and crystal clear water. And it has a name. Its leaves are for the healing of the nations for you. And what that tree promises is nothing other than eternal life. Which tree? Life. For that city, the king's servants can worship him. Just as they heard at the end of worship services their whole life, the Lord's face beamed continually at them. And though they spent their whole lives crying out to him, now God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This last chapter of the Bible comes full circle from the first. The paradise lost in Genesis 1 is the paradise regained in Revelation 22. And the constant cry of the Christian heart throughout is made. Come. Come, O 
seed of David and root of that seed. Come, O comes of life and wealth from God. Come, wash over us and bring life to this broken world again. Come, help friend obey. First and last, beginning and end, you who at the beginning and created all things. Now come and create again. Make all things to you. Make us to you. Day by day as you call us out of sin. Make us to you to stand in that blessed beauty forever. Coming to the Lord Jesus, the grace of the Lord.